On today's show, we're going to be talking about stick, MIG, and TIG. So when you're out in the field, there's three main types of welding that are easily portable and are the most commonly used on-site welding. Those three are shielded metal arc, gas metal arc, and gas tungsten arc, or commonly known as stick, MIG, and TIG. I want to start with stick. On shielded metal arc welding, you have your power supply and we're running electrode positive. That means that our electrons are coming out of the machine to the base material, and the electrons are coming off the base material into your electrode, melting it off. That's your ground, that's your stinger there. You weld with a electrode that has the filler metal on the inside, and then you have a flux coating over the outside that when it burns, it creates a atmosphere that displaces the oxygen so your molten metal stays nice and clean, and it also creates a slag over the top that protects the molten material. This is the oldest of these three processes and is very common in use out in the field because you can run a generator and run the welder off of the generator. This machine is gas metal arc welding. We're using a solid wire on this, the same type of principle. We have the machine creating a current through the torch. The electrode is not shielded on this. It's just a bare electrode. And so we have to use a shielding gas that goes around the arc as we're welding and that protects the molten material as well as stabilizes the arc. This is a really good process for when you're doing thin gauge metal <clears throat> in the short arc, um, the short arc settings that we're using here. It doesn't put in very much heat input. It's a lot lower heat input most of the time than your shielded metal arc. So very good for sheet metal and smaller tubings, but this is better for plate. You can buy bigger machines of this, turn it up, crank it up, and weld thick sections. We did it all the time in oil and gas. But for what we're doing with these little machines, this is usually thinner. When you go to really thin, intricate work or need really pretty welds that are going to be visible as welded, you're not going to be painting them or covering them, you want to go to a gas tungsten arc process. The gas tungsten arc is the most complicated of these three from both a equipment standpoint as well as an operation standpoint. You have to have a shielding gas that protects your tungsten. You have your machine. We're running electrode negative on this. So remember on these processes where you have the electrons coming off of the base material into the, into the electrode, melting the electrode, you've got 80% of your heat back on the electrode, 20% heat on the base metal. This is opposite. It puts 20% of the heat on your tungsten electrode and 80% of your heat into the base material. And then you have a filler rod here that is just a bare steel rod co covered in a, in a copper coating for um, corrosion. And you're able to weld it using this, putting, it, putting your filler material in independently of your weld arc. What's nice about that is you can do an autogenous welder. You can weld without filler metal and make just a real nice clean weld without putting any filler material in or you can add the fill, filler material they're independent of each other to where on shielded metal arc and gas metal arc when you have an arc you're filling it with filler material you can't separate the two you also have this weld amperage control pedal on tig and this is when when luke's welding he uses his foot to push this down and that creates more amperage or less amperage through the through the arc creating a bigger and a smaller weld as necessary. So it's a little bit more like riding a bike instead of riding a tricycle. Instead of just pulling a trigger, you've got to be controlling the amp, controlling your filler material, and controlling your uh, weld torch all at the same time. So that's these three machines. They're, they're basic. Uh, these two machines here are more professional level small machines, so they're Miller inverters. They're really robust machines. This machine in the middle uh, Lincoln makes great inverters too that are that are professional quality, but we just happen to have more of the big box store version out here today. It does great for most of our small stuff, but once you really start putting a lot of uh, duty cycle on it, you'll want to upgrade to one of the more expensive, even if it's Lincoln brand, uh, one of their more expensive inverters instead of this, this, smaller, this smaller version here. 
Thanks for watching. Follow me on Instagram, Jordan Smith Builds. And also I wanted to let you know that we are moving over to a new channel here on YouTube. Matt's been doing Build with Matt Reisinger for years. He's gonna continue rocking that. We're creating our own space called Build with Jordan Smith, where we're gonna be doing a lot of the same things with high-end craftsmanship and metal and cabinetry and other trades. Also, what I'm really excited about is we're gonna be interviewing architects, going through some finished spaces with them, talking about their design ideas and how they executed certain aspects of the design. And it's really gonna be cool showing the finished products. Uh, I'm really excited about that. I think it's gonna be a really good channel. That will be rolling out here in the next couple weeks. Otherwise, follow us over here on The Build Show.